Tonight's challenge is to cook our rabbit over a spit. We've uh, seen it done in Robin Hood films, so on and so forth, and we've got a few ideas of our own as to uh, how we're going to try and achieve this, um, which will uh, all become apparent as the evening uh, continues. So this is a small trench that we've dug. As you can see, it's only about rabbit length long, and um, you know, just a few centimetres deep, and just took a few minutes digging. So, here we have our uh, two sets of tripods made, the higher set and our lower set for uh, when the fire dies down, so that it just cooks from the heat of the fire, because we don't want it in the flames and actually burning the flesh. So our next step is to make the spit. So, here we have our spit, and what I've done is I've cut down a flat edge on both sides of the uh, spit stick and drilled a hole through just using my knife a little bit on one side then a little bit on the other side until it meets in the middle and the idea of this is so that our rabbit will actually stick on the spit and we can turn it so we can cook it on uh, all sides evenly and so we will then push the kebab stick through the rabbit and then through the stick and out the other side of the rabbit. So then it should, in theory, <laughs> spin around with the stick so we can, uh, as I say, cook it evenly on all sides. Um, we did consider, of course, that you don't often carry kebab sticks around your back pocket. Uh, so we split down a piece of um, oak, uh, it's an oak branch, uh, with the pen knife and uh, made our own version of a kebab stick, which uh, seems to work okay. Whether it will actually be strong enough to go through a rabbit and then through this and out the other side is yet to be seen, uh, but we will give it a go. Uh, the other idea we did have was, was which was um, these little hawthorn spikes, uh, which are really needle sharp. I stuck one on my finger earlier, and um, the pain is testament to how sharp they are. Yeah. And they also will go through there, but again, whether they're strong enough to find their way through a rabbit leg and then into this is yet to be seen. So uh, we will come back to when we have uh, attached our rabbit. Here we have the uh, rabbit which we uh, managed to get on the spit. As I said earlier, we cut down the flat sides, made a hole through, and actually, <laughs> we're both quite impressed, I am impressed, that our homemade kebab stick has worked. The yep. first one snapped. Yeah. Um, but the second one went straight through, so that's the homemade kebab stick out of the uh, piece of oak. And then we've jammed three hawthorn spikes through the other end. So we're trying both methods. Uh, the hawthorn spikes are incredibly sharp and just go straight through rabbit skin and uh, through the flesh without any problem at all. Uh, the main reason for three was just to fill up the hole in the stick, so hopefully it grips, but so far the results seem to be pretty good. So that's exactly what we hope to achieve. Uh, so our next challenge is to give our rabbit a little bit of taste. We've brought um, a couple of chopped onions and some garlic and we're going to attempt to stuff this into the centre of the rabbit and then sew it up with a homemade needle as well. Uh, the challenges are endless this evening. Um, so the theory on the homemade needle is that we're going to split off a piece of oak rather similar to that, make a hole in it to thread the string through and then sharpen off the end, cut it down and then use that to uh, stitch up the rabbit. So we will show you the results of uh, this experiment in a little while. Um, we, I was just going to show you the finished product here but I'm so chuffed that it's actually worked and I really thought the finished product was going to be a disaster. But, yeah. uh, as you can see, my uh, homemade needle is actually working. So I'll just show it you in action. And uh, pearl one loop one or something. Oh, that's knitting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Stitch. Yeah. So there's a stitch. And I think the last one. Yep. Yeah. So this um, rather crude needle is making very big holes. So I'm doing the stitches a long way apart. And then uh, 
tied off with a knot. I cannot believe that has worked. Nor can I. Um, I know what to do, I'll just tie it around the stick now. Oh yeah. The one thing that can still go wrong with this is the string burns through. But hopefully by just cooking it by the heat of the fire and not by the flames, that is not going to happen. Mm. So, we have our stuffed rabbit ready for the fire. Let's uh, put it over the fire. It's a little bit in the flames, and the string's burning already, so we'll turn it round the other way. Yep. And that's it, working in action. So really, we need to build the fire up, Ooh. and get a lot of heat generated without the flames. When uh, I gutted the rabbit, I uh, saved the liver. Uh, as a little treat for both of us. Mm. <laughs> um, we're, neither of us are particularly sure about this, to be honest with you. Um, I think it's just the fact that we've taken it out of a live animal. Yeah. Um, which is bizarre because when it comes out of a plastic packet, it seems to be perfect. Thank you, Snoops. Yeah. <laughs> seems to be perfectly acceptable. A um, couple of bits, two sticks. I just whittled them down until they made a flat edge and then use this very handy little saw to cut through just one cut and then use my knife to open up the V so it gives us a, a sort of a double prong which will just hopefully keep it on the stick better Yeah. and again enable a bit of turning so we're going to happily cook our liver over the fire and uh, come back to you when it's ready um, as Simon was putting some firewood on the fire, he knocked um, his piece of liver off into the fire. So I very generously offered him half of mine. <laughs> Much to my relief. Yeah. So here we go. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this at all. The liver platter. Like a slither. Certainly well cooked. Thankfully. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know why I said that in such a high pitched voice. <laughs> Actually, it's not that bad at all. I'm pleasantly surprised. Well, it just tastes like a piece of liver, doesn't it? Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. Exactly the same as any liver. It's just that uh, we're slightly more aware of where it came from. Yeah. I quite like it, actually. It's fine. Um, in making the liver sticks, I came up with an idea which was to split off a piece of oak just like this one, a little bit thinner than that, and um, lost it. Yeah. Using the same saw, just did two cuts <coughs> down, about two or three centimetres, and then use my knife to get into the cut and whittle away from the inside and um, produced a, a bit of a fork. Yeah. Not the most uh, stunning piece of silverware that will ever grace anyone's dining room table. Yeah. But uh, even so, it does just show you what you can make when you put your mind to it. And um, yeah, just give it a bit of... and it just knocked on from making that. And I thought, oh, I could actually make two cuts and then uh, come up with three prongs. So I will uh, endeavour to try and use this later on. 
if nothing else, it might just be handy to sort of hold something down yeah, whilst you cut it. Cut, yeah. I think the uh, points need a bit of uh, refining. But apart from that, I was uh, quite chuffed with that. Uh, rabbit's been cooking now for an hour. Um, and the spit is still working absolutely fine. Yep. The stitching is still holding up amazingly. Yeah. Um, and really, that's about it. Everything is working. <laughs> Unbelievably. Yeah. Uh, what it'll taste like, we don't know yet. Hopefully, rabbity, oniony, and garlicky. But um, amazingly, everything is uh, working extremely well. The hawthorn sticks have st they got a bit burnt to start with on the outside, but they're still holding, and the homemade kebab stick is still holding. Now the moment has arrived to test our uh, supper. I'm actually feeling quite peckish now. I am quite hungry. So I think, first of all, you know, our spit has held up really well. Incredibly so. Yeah. Homemade kebab stick, hawthorn thorns. Um, there's still quite a lot of moisture inside of it, yeah. it's dripping out. Yeah. Snoopers, off. Go away. Go away. Good boy. So, first of all, I'll take a slice into the back meat. He's standing there perfectly on his own. <laughs> Looks a bit freaky, actually. It does. Oh, look at that. I can see. <laughs> it's a little... Oh, no. I'm just going to put my head torch on a sec to see. Okay. No, that's fine. I reckon. Awesome. And it's nice and juicy, actually. That wow. me... is a nicely cooked piece of rabbit. And I think that the... Um, the onions inside of it have just been leaking out moisture. Yep. So it's actually made it sort of quite succulent. And you can have the honour of using my fork. Oh, yes. That is very nice. <laughs> it is, isn't that it? That is. I'm a little bit shocked, if I'm honest. I really thought it was going to be tough. Yeah. Dry. Dry. Yeah. Dry would be the main thing. Wow. But I really do totally believe that the onions inside, and as you can see in the video, it's been it was dripping out. Yeah. So it's just been constantly dripping moisture into the meat. Otherwise, I think it would be really dry. Yeah. And tough. But overall. Apart from being a little bit impatient, yeah, um, a stunning success. Brilliant. Absolutely I mean, it really brilliant. is. It's, yeah, yeah. And you know, I would highly recommend the uh, onion inside every oh. time. Oh yeah. I think because I just, you know, judging by the outer skin, without that moisture inside, it really would have been um, a lot, lot drier. How much drier? We don't know, but. No. So that brings us to our conclusion for the evening. Indeed. A brilliant one. Uh, next week making charcoal. No, making a smokery next week. Oh, making smokery, yeah. We're going to try and smoke some meat next week as our uh, woodland challenge 